Hey guys, what's up? It's Ryan. Uh, hey, I'm working on a, a little art project, a little illustration thing, and uh, I've got to do this work anyway. So I thought, uh, what the heck? Let's go live and and see if people want to get in on the digital illustration fun. Uh, I had hoped to be able to have a live chat. I don't know why I don't have one. Um, I will try to have one for next time. Uh, basically, I, I've got to do this work anyhow. So I thought I might as well just share it with the audience and see if anybody who's interested in digital illustration digs it. Uh, I'm basically drawing on a iPad Pro. Uh, the app is called Procreate. It's pretty common. A lot of people use it. I would encourage you to just do some searching around on YouTube. You can find lots of people who are really good in Procreate. Uh, so do that. You can find people to do whatever it is you're looking to do. Um, for people who have been following me for any period of time, you know that I do these illustrations or this series of illustrations that are sort of based on these old uh, Balinese and Thai masks uh, called Barong masks. And uh, they're sort of, you know, this mythical creature and, and all this stuff. And so um, I do a lot of different creatures in that style. You can check it out. It's roghaar slash shop. Uh, you can go check out my online store. I've got a bunch of stuff over there you can see that are sort of in this style. So you can see what I'm doing. A uh, little behind the scenes on this illustration, which I started last night, but I probably should have shared from the beginning, was uh, so over the weekend, I was in Las Vegas for an NFT conference. Uh, I had an opportunity to become friendly with and a part of a, a group of NFTs called uh, the Pigeons of New York. Uh, fun little project. More than anything, I just I love the guys. I like the people behind it. I mean, it's just the coolest set of dudes, and uh, I'm really grateful to be a part of their community and be you know sharing uh, stuff with them. Anyway, I decided to do this illustration kind of as an homage. I mean, I haven't shared it with them or anything yet, so I mean they'll see it when it's done, I guess. But uh, but anyway, so I'm doing this kind of as a for funsy, but also you know I'm trying to to build a rep or, uh, a reputation as an artist and a designer. And so, uh, well, in addition to the work I do in agency, I'm trying to come out more as an individual artist now. And uh, so this is one of the projects I'm working on. Just, you know, if nothing else, I'm sharpening the stone and, and we'll do more illustrations later. But I thought it would be fun to do a little homage to the pigeons. So anyway, this is a, you know, pretty, you know, I, I don't know, we're pretty far down the road already with this illustration. But um, I can give you just kind of a little quick preview. Let me see if Procreate, I'll do a little play of the time lapse for you just so you can kind of see how the thing was constructed. I don't know how visible that is on screen. It looks like it's not totally visible to me, but anyway, but you can kind of see as the uh, drawing takes shape, uh, what it looks like. I think I just noticed too, or just realized I'm upside down. So, uh, so sorry about that. Um, that'll be something I'll have to fix for next time, I guess. Actually, I guess, uh, let, me, let me do this. Let's do done. Let's uh, do something, you know, not super professional to handle on air, but let's just do it since nobody's watching right now. We'll just go like that and flip that baby around. So let's see if I can come over here a little bit so you guys can see what's going on. All right, we'll see if that's any better. So uh, anyway, um, let me jump back into that replay real fast and I'll just finish uh, letting it play out for you. We'll get about halfway through. By the way, also people who listen to me a lot know the, uh, the I, I listen to a singer called Mo quite a bit. She's my favorite. Um, so anyway, so today we're listening to Mo's album, uh, Motor Drum. I actually don't know how well you can hear it through the mic. And honestly, it might get me scrubbed for copyright or something anyhow. So uh, if the music is not there when you hear this later, then uh, then you'll know why. So anyway, this little video is about to wrap up. It's got about another 10 seconds or something like that. But moral of the story, and you'll see this little graphic. Once I publish this thing, you'll see it on my social media. You'll see it all over the place. So I'll start to do a little bit of a media blitz. But that's sort of how this illustration came together. So I thought you'd like to see that. Uh, this is the initial sketch. I don't know how well you can see it back there. But uh, in, in blue, I always draw in blue. And then this is the uh, the inks, I guess, so to speak. So anyway, so I'm just going to work on this for a few minutes. Um, I was really hopeful we could have comments and, uh, you know, a chat going so that we could talk in here, um, you know, and I could answer any questions or whatever. Uh, I guess I don't really know what the best way for people to reach out sort of in real time is. So, um, so I guess we'll just have to solve all that later. But maybe go ahead and put in the comments on this video. Uh, you know, what you think, what, you know, what you'd like to see more of, what you'd like to learn more about. 
And uh, I guess other than that, I'm just going to draw for a little bit. So uh, stay tuned, listen to the music. I hope you like it. And we'll be just drawing for a little bit. can't do live Q&A uh, while we're streaming this. I can just talk a little bit about what I'm doing. Uh, maybe that's useful, I don't know, for people who are, are tuning in. Um, as you can see, much of this drawing is symmetrical. Um, Procreate is a really cool tool called assisted drawing that basically allows you to draw both sides of the image at once. So as I was creating the one side, it made the other side for me, which is cool. It makes like a, a nice symmetrical piece of art. And so that's cool. But um, at some point, at least for me, if I want my illustrations to be sort of unique or interesting, they can't be totally symmetrical, right? So I am uh, now off the assisted drawing uh, and basically doing each of these. These are little feathers. So I'm going through and I'm just drawing sort of adding some detail to each of those feathers individually. Uh, but no two feathers will be alike because I'm just sort of working through them. So uh, so in case you're, you're wondering what's going on, that's what's going on. So the, the symmetry thing is a nice little, uh, you know, tool helps you, helps you make some progress. But I think if you do illustrations that are strictly symmetrical, sometimes they lose a little bit of character, a little bit of flavor. And so I think it's good to, uh, to include variation, you know, I mean, even things that seem symmetrical in life, you know, human beings for one, or like our faces or, you know, having two arms or two legs or, you know, any of that stuff, like, no two are alike, you know, I mean, your two legs aren't the same, my two legs aren't the same, uh, you know, it's just, uh, just sort of how it goes. And so I think adding or introducing a little uh, asymmetry in your illustrations can be useful, uh, or at least make them a little more visually interesting. Um, I think too, um, you know, this illustration is kind of, I mean, it's still pretty early, at least in terms of, you know, it hasn't gotten any color yet or anything like that. Um, so some of the details and things are still sort of trapped in my head and they will become more apparent as we get to that stage of the drawing, uh, which unfortunately we probably won't get to today. At some point I've got to probably peel off and do some like real work. So, but I did want to do this for a little while today and, uh, I've been experimenting or planning to experiment with doing these sort of live drawing demos, uh, if for no other reason than just to kind of make myself accountable, um, you know, I'm trying to develop right now a little bit of a, a reputation as a, a artist. Um, I have for, I mean, for people who don't really know, I'll give you a little bit of the backstory, but I mean, I've been working in advertising and design for 20 years, you know, working in computers, uh, doing Photoshop, Illustrator, you know, usual suspects. Um, you know, I've built a whole career on that stuff and that's amazing. But, um, you know, but I always like to draw. I always like to do illustration. I always like to, or I want to dabble more with arts and crafts and things like that. And, um, just have never really made time for it, right? It's hard when basically you're paid to do graphic design every day. So, I mean, that's, you know, it becomes the focus. And, uh, which is cool. You know, I mean, that's obviously a, a fun job and it's a cool job to have. And, and I run my own agency, so that's kind of nice. Um, but, you know, outside of my advertising world, like nobody really knows me as anything other than 
know, creative director, art director guy, you know, and, uh, and when they come to me for work or opportunities or whatever, it's always to hire me, the designer. Uh, they're not necessarily looking for me, the artist. Right. And so, uh, which is fine. I mean, that's how I've positioned myself all these years. But um, but now uh, I'm really trying to make the turn. I want to get into doing, you know, more sort of art and illustration for fun. And uh, what really kicked it off is uh, sort of recently uh, I have a 15 year old son and he's really into a couple music groups, uh, specifically this group of guys called the Spider Gang um, or just Spider Gang, I guess. I don't want to sound like the old guy. Um, but Spider Gang is, you know, basically a, a group of rappers that, that get together and perform and, and uh, my son just loves them. And so he's been, you know, following their careers for a little while now. And he uh, basically worked himself into a position where he was able to do, he's kind of artistic as well. And so he, he had the opportunity to do a couple of like paid commissions for the guy who does all the merchandise for Spider Gang. And uh, so anyway, so that turned out cool. And basically what he ended up doing was creating a, a skateboard. And I think you can, you, you can probably find it on his social media. I'll have to find some links for you guys. But you can see what he did. Basically, we created some, uh, you know, custom hand-painted skateboards and things like that. And, uh, you know, for different artists. And they seem to like them. So uh, just recently uh, in August, we did, or we went to another concert and we had the, the VIP experience or whatever, but he had two commissioned pieces for, uh, for this merch guy there. And uh, so anyway, so it was really cool. It's really exciting for him. And honestly, I mean, it, you know, I'm very proud of him for doing, you know, sort of commissioned art at 15. It's pretty cool. And so, um, so that said, um, as part of that, I mean, he, is you know uh, learning as an artist and growing and becoming better all the time but he's not uh fully formed yet and so he asked me to to help him out with some of these projects just because they uh you know required some hand skill and stuff like that that he maybe didn't have you know uh basically we we took these skate decks and we, we print or uh painted on them sp uh, spray painted and uh hand painted and did all kinds of stuff on them to make these cool skateboards and uh, they're, they're very cool, but nonetheless, I ended up doing a lot of the work or a chunk of the work anyway, just to make sure that it came out to the uh, level of expectation, you know, sort of professional level that he needed to deliver. So, uh, so anyway, so I got involved, I helped him with those things. And that was sort of like, I don't know, like the first real art project I had done in years, you know, probably since college. And uh so anyway, so it was, uh, it was a cool experience and it was good. And it got me all fired up to do more art. Uh oh, I think I lost my camera. Hang on just a second. Sorry, the camera I use for the podcast has a hard wire. And so it's always plugged in and I never have to worry about batteries, which is a gift. But right now the uh, configuration I'm using is a second camera and it does require a battery pack. Let's see if it comes back to life. There we go. Short delay. I never claim to be a total professional. And to be perfectly honest, there's nobody here, and I'm just kind of talking to myself anyway. So it's probably not that big a deal. So, but if we start doing these streams more regularly, I will, uh, I'll probably adjust that setup a little um for anybody who's sort of jumping in kind of late or you know just maybe picking up on this live stream um just a, a quick reminder we're drawing today in procreate uh this is a, an apple ipad pro i think it's 12.9 or 11.9 whatever the current biggest is um so uh, we have some other ways that we could draw or that I could show you guys, you know, with Wacom tablets or, or things like that. But uh, I, I quite like Procreate and, uh, you know, it's a great app to work in. It's wildly flexible. It does almost everything. And I mean, there's a ton of stuff that I don't even know how to do in it. So I'm not, uh, not even really claiming to be an expert in using it. There's a, a lot of people who have done just absolutely incredible stuff in Procreate and, um, uh, you know, I'm very envious of the ability of some so many people. There's some just amazing artists out there. Um, you know, so anyway, so I sort of I do my thing, but I, it's not the most sophisticated 
uh, Procreate thing. So if you're looking for a Procreate tutorial or something, I would recommend looking elsewhere for that. But if you just want to sort of see how it works, if you want to learn how to draw something, uh, if you just want a little creative something, or if you just want to hang out and listen to Mo with me, uh, yeah, I'm glad to have you. It's uh, a fun thing to do, I think. So, um, I don't remember if I totally finished my story of why I'm doing art again, but basically, you know, everything to do with my kid and his story and what he's doing and uh, the opportunity to do some art with him uh, sort of inspired me to look at doing a little more art more regularly. And so with that, I launched my online store again, my sort of studio, um, you know, which I haven't really done professionally in a long time. So that was kind of a, a new uh, adjustment. Um, I got that up. I put up, you know, some sort of art that's, you know, was originally drawn as NFTs. Um, but because of sort of limited success, you know, really no sales on those NFTs, I felt fair, comfortable uh, repurposing that art as, um, you know, just digital art that you can buy. Um, basically, we offer some T-shirts, some um, stickers and things like that. And then also just like, you know, uh, nice prints and things. Um, if you've watched any of sort of the, the recent episodes of Eggs, I, I believe maybe one or two of them have got my new artwork in the background. Uh, before that, I had some illustrations by a, a pretty famous illustrator, this guy named Aaron Draplin. Um, so, but now I've, I've switched those over to a couple of my prints. Um, they're actually, I mean, they're for being, you know, a digital reproduction, you know, versus like a screen printed poster or something. They're, they're incredible quality. They're really well made. Uh, thrilled to death with the vendor that does them for me. And, uh, and I think for people who buy them, I mean, they're really a nice quality showpiece that you can have. Uh, the, the prints that I'm selling presently are 18 by 24 inches. They're, uh, you know, on a nice heavy paper. Um, because of the nature of the way they're produced, which is sort of an on-demand platform, um, I don't have the ability to sell like originals or signed art yet. So that's kind of the next nut I'm trying to crack. Um, I've put out a few surveys via my email list asking for people who, you know, what, what they want from me, what they'd like to see in the store, that kind of thing. And had a number of people, you know, comment that they would like to see more live, you know, original art <clears throat> and uh, which is always hard in digital form, right? Because it's original, but it doesn't feel very original, you know, cause it's just inside the computer uh, or inside the iPad in this case. Um, but the, uh, but still, you know, I can, uh, or what, what that's driving me to do is actually go and create some, you know, some real artwork, do some painting, do some, uh, illustration pieces, you know, maybe just pencil on paper or charcoal on paper, that kind of thing. And then, uh, also, uh, I haven't painted a lot in over the years, but with these little skate decks and stuff that we've been doing for, uh, the spider gang crew, um, I think, I think I could do it. And uh, so anyway, so I want to do some artwork right now. I'm just kind of working on inspiration. You know, what do I do for paintings and, you know, what's my style and all that stuff, you know, like these little illustrations are cool. And I, I really like these uh, barong mask things that I do. Um, but I'm not totally sure if I want that to be like my whole thing forever. You know, not to say that it has to be. It's just, you know, a lot of artists tend to fall into sort of a style or something that they do. And uh, which probably makes it easier to sell, right? I mean, if you want to become a, you know, like a street artist or a famous guy like a Jason Naylor or a Cause or, a, um, you know, any of these sort of famous street guys, Futura, any of these dudes, like part, part of being an artist, I guess, is kind of having your identity. And uh, I guess, I mean, maybe it's a gift, maybe it's a curse, but from spending so much time in advertising, I'm, I'm really used to doing art and illustrations in a million different styles because, uh, you know, I always had to do whatever the client needed. And so, um, so I, I have a really hard time like knowing who I am, right? Like I, I don't know what my art is supposed to look like. And so I like these masks. They look good. I don't know if this will be the end of my, my transformation. I suspect not, but, uh, but we're definitely in a phase where we're doing masks and that's kind of fun. So I don't know if you can see this line that I just did. Um, this is a little thing I do sometimes to make my drawings look a little bit more dynamic, at least in my head. Uh, so I guess it's kind of a pointer. You can see there's sort of this line here, but then this line I just drew sort of feeds onto that. 
I don't like that. I think it makes it look like a mistakes happened or something like that. So I'm going to undo that line and I'm just going to shift it off a little bit just so that it's not seemingly connected to that for some reason. Um, you know, there, there's probably an argument for, for keeping it there and, you know, maybe you could draw the eye in or do something interesting like that. But, um, but for me, I sort of, I think it looks like an accident if it's too, I guess, non-organic or if things are kind of the same, you see, I just did it again. I sort of looped those together. So, um, so yeah, so I think it's important to sort of, especially if you're trying to do something that's organic. So in this case, it's a feather, right? And, uh, so I kind of want to be natural right and like we were talking about before i mean nature is not perfectly symmetrical and uh and that sort of thing and so i uh i want to try and avoid perfect symmetry or anything that might come off as looking a little too perfect and uh and see if i can avoid those things by just making little tweaks so uh, sometimes you'll see me take a perfectly good line and and get rid of it and that's why So I'll say one thing I do a lot and uh, I really appreciate for uh, out of procreate is uh, for people who draw, I don't know if everybody draws the way I do, but I am uh, constantly like flipping and rolling my paper over. I mean, I'm sure you've noticed even in this you know, 20 minutes of this stream so far that I'm constantly tweaking and turning this stuff. And when I'm drawing on paper, I do the exact same thing, but procreate makes it really easy to, um, to do that right so just with a little pinch and a, and a twist i can uh, take advantage of being able to roll my canvas over and uh, for me that's huge because otherwise i'd spend all day rotating the ipad and so it's kind of a, a dumb thing but you know i have a certain style of drawing or a certain way of drawing and drawn that way for a long time so it should be a challenge to try and stop doing it now but like sometimes like i have to get the right angle on stuff you know it's just how it goes Put a big gap there, I think. You know, again, we're trying to be organic or, you know, of nature. And you know, even though this is just a cartoon, right? But, but by showing these sort of imperfections and then having them not be symmetrical with the opposite side, it sort of adds a little bit of depth, I think, to the drawing. Uh, one of the other sort of inspirations to go live here on the eggs channel versus on mine, uh, my personal YouTube, uh, which I will probably move this over there. Um, my personal YouTube is, is well, was built initially to be sort of a personal finance channel for self-employed people. And I'd like to get back to it, but unfortunately between work and eggs and life and everything else, um, I just couldn't keep up the production schedule. I was doing two shows a week and, uh, I mean, they're great. They're fun. I think they're really good content. And if you go back and watch them, they're cool. Um, but they um, were very time consuming. And so I just haven't been able to do that uh, as much as I would like. But now with this um, sort of new personal branding push, um, doing some art and some illustration and things like that, um, you know, I want to have a component of that YouTube channel that's probably dedicated to sort of arts and crafts and you know, I don't know what I'll do, if it'll be anything more than just kind of demos like this. I don't see me setting up, you know, camera rigs and stuff to be able to uh, to go out and shoot me painting, for example, or something like that. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll do some time lapses or something as I start to work on, uh, you know, painted projects and things like that. So part of it, too, will depend on, you know, what people uh, who watch this do and say, you know, if they're into it or not. Um, I may experiment with some different platforms too. I, uh, I am set up stream on Twitch. Um, I don't, I've actually never done it, but, uh, but I am set up to do a, 
Um, so I may look at Twitch um, or wherever, you know, sort of the art community is at. I mean, if they're on YouTube, cool. I mean, because I can publish replays of this wherever. But um, but what I'm having fun with or what I want to experiment with is this live component. You know, I mean, could we be drawing together? Could we be communicating with one another? Could we be building a relationship here while, uh, you know, having a good time learning some stuff maybe from one another and going back and forth a little bit? I do wish uh, we had a little bit more of a live or interactive component uh, to YouTube. Like I say, I think it's probably just a matter of settings or permissions or something that we don't have a live chat right now. Uh, so I will crack that nut as soon as I get a minute to do so. But um, but until then, like, I mean, it would be cool if people could chime in and answer questions or ask questions and stuff. Uh, I looked at doing this on TikTok because I thought that that might offer us opportunities like that. Uh, people can do, I think they call it, uh, oh, I don't know remember uh, they split or something they do something where they can oh uh, duet i think where you can um basically grab somebody's video and then sort of talk over it or whatever you want to do and uh so then people could have maybe ask questions that way um or maybe we'll look into using something like uh, i think it's an app called slido that sort of gives people the ability to ask questions via text um you know, there, there's some options. Uh, we could even do this live through like a clubhouse or a Twitter space or something. Um, I've got a, a, a soundboard that will allow me to uh, take phone calls. And, you know, I could use the, the spaces platform basically to bring people up to the stage and let them ask questions and stuff. And then we can just broadcast it live on YouTube or whatever uh, at the same time or tape it and release it later, whatever we want to do. But uh, anyway, so there's lots of options. But I mean, basically what you're watching right now, you know, which is, I mean, according to YouTube is still zero people. So I'm still just here talking to myself is, um, you know, we may be able to do some some fun, interactive things that way. And uh, and if people get into this or, you know, watch the replay and want to come around, uh, you know, then maybe we can build on top of this. Uh, I've not. I mean, I didn't announce this or anything. I didn't put it on social. I didn't do anything. So I guess I'm not totally surprised there's nobody here. But hopefully people will watch the video. So right now, um, just to try and keep this educational, I guess, I'm doing just some sort of little marks and flourishes. Um, I think they kind of add character to illustrations, and they sort of take them to the next level, right? So there's... A version of these illustrations that is not as complex and there's a version that's more complex right and uh, in some ways uh, for some art uh, increased complexity makes stuff a little bit more interesting or a little more cool to look at and uh, so that's kind of what i'm looking at i kind of actually don't like some of these so i'm going to back out some of those um but yeah so i think that there's you can do some of these flourishes, you know, things like that as you see fit. But. So, but certainly they're not necessary. Um, at this point, we could probably be working into color and stuff like that. But I want to just do a few things, you know, to add to sort of, I guess, the quote unquote realism on this cartoon. But also just to give it a little flavor. So, um, also... I started just drawing with an with a uh, a resource or like a uh, what do they call it a reference, and uh, I mean I'm not very close to the reference image, but this is the the reference I was using. It's a New York or Pigeon of New York NFT. Uh, this one is the Naked Cowboy. It's actually it's one I own, and uh, well it's the only one only pigeon I own at this point. But, um, but anyway, I was trying to just take some things from it uh, and the way it was illustrated and implement them into my drawing just to sort of, you know, make the homage a little tighter. So you'll notice, like, uh, in my illustration, you'll see the eyebrow here is sort of broken up into two pieces. You know, there's this piece and this piece, sort of like this here. Um, he's got an eyelid in here, you know, kind of like this one does. Um, my other Barong illustrations don't have eyelids like that. Um, these kinds of little sort of whatever we're calling this shading or these little flourishes uh, is sort of derivative of these that they've got uh, running around on their reference image there. Uh, I'm not going to have any neck, unfortunately, because it'd be really easy to do this sort of little feather pattern or something and integrate that. 
but um but anyway so i've moved kind of away from the uh the reference at this point but the point is that uh in order to tie this back to the original project a little bit i've been looking at some of those details so the types of flourishes i'm adding down here in this sort of i don't know what it is it's a mane or something uh just hairs i guess what is that So anyway, um, these uh, yeah little details are just kind of meant to, I don't know, mess it up a little bit, make it look a little less perfect uh, in terms of shapes and illustrations. And then it's also a little bit of an homage to the way they decorated their own art. All right. Well, guys, um, I think we're actually getting dangerously close to done with the uh, this top layer. Um, I will definitely be adding some more things. So actually, maybe I'll show you a couple of those before I, I get out of here. Because um, I don't think I'm going to have time to do color before I got to get to work. So, um, so one of the things that I found that I just, I, I think I just do them because I, I like drawing them, is these little cracks and things like this um, in these like tusk-like items. You know, a, part of these brong masks is that they're, you know, they're art, they're designed by people, they're made, uh, built by artisans. And um, they, uh, you know, there's some legacy to it or old history to them, you know. And, uh, and so I like this. Uh, sort of adding these effects, you know, these cracks and breaks to them. So I think it just kind of makes the the tusk a little bit more interesting. And, uh, you know, I, it, certainly there's no right or wrong way to do this. I mean, I'm just kind of making these up, right? Um, and I may actually go in and refine them. You can see I've got a few here along the, the lids of the eyes too. Um, but after, I don't know why I did that. Somebody that knows Procreate better than me will know what I just did. Um, so, but anyway, so I, you know, I'm just going to add a couple of these details. I like to put, you know, little cracks and stuff like that and some of the teeth, you know, and if you go and you look at the other uh, items in this collection, in this Barong collection, um, you'll see that, you know, these are some shared characteristics. These are things that have, you know, appeared in other illustrations as well. Like, what do we think about knocking out a tooth? This might be interesting. I don't know. Uh, playing with a, you know, kind of a crack or a break in the, the beak here. Um, most of these characters that I've done, you know, some of them are sort of based on like pop culture characters. Um, others are based on, um, you know, just sort of more the, the lore or whatever that sort of goes around these projects. Um, and so, you know, depending on the mask I'm drawing, some of them have a, you know, a more realistic set of characteristics and others are, are less but i think you know one of the things you want in a good consistent illustration is that everything sort of you know they, there are rules in the world right so there's rules in this world that these masks exist in and so it seems to me that hard surfaces can crack and um less hard surfaces don't um so typically i wouldn't have cracks across the face like this um and and that may go away also but um, I thought it might work with the or with these, you know, pigeons specifically because the, you know, the bird would have kind of a hard mask. And so, um, so yeah, so I thought it might work. I don't know. Yeah. 
I actually don't know what these little things are. So, you know, I'm sitting here saying we need to have consistent rules about only hard things can break and that kind of stuff. So I guess these are hard things um, versus, you know, more organic materials like, uh, you know, the, the hair or the bristles on the side or the feathers, you know, which are organic. So they, they wouldn't crack the way a, a hard material would. So we'll see if, uh, if any of that makes sense or actually makes it to the final illustration, but kind of what I'm thinking or what's going through my head right now while I'm working on them. <sighs> All right. Um, well, I think, I don't know. I'm trying to decide how much longer to go on this. I give myself 20 more minutes. Maybe, because I'm kind of having fun, and I think it would be good to, to block in some color, you know, while we're in this thing. I mean, we still have, you know, what amounts to zero viewers right now, so I'm just, I, I'm just talking to myself, really. Um, but for anybody who goes and watches this, I don't know, you may want at least a, a foundational look at how we start to add color. Um, also, I need to decide. I had grand plans of doing this sort of, like, triangle cutout in the eye. I'm trying to decide if that makes sense or not. So I may just draw it in for now, but I don't know for sure if I'll keep it. So that's a variation from the other Barong masks that I've done. I've not done one that looked like that before. Um, so I don't know. I'm not sure if I love it yet. We'll take a look. So anyway, so maybe what we'll do is just quickly add a color layer, a couple color layers, just so you can see what's going on or how sort of we proceed from here. And then um, I don't know if I'll get a chance to do another live or, or not, but we'll uh, we'll start with that. So uh, first thing we do is, so I always like to set this to, um, or actually we just leave it the same, and I'm going to add a layer in here. If I was uh, being a little less sloppy, I would probably go through and, and name these layers, but for now, you know, whatever. Um, our top layer here, I don't know how much you can really see it, um, is this is our black ink layer. So if I turn it on and off, you see the inks will disappear. And then below that is our sort of sketch layer, right? At this point, we don't need the sketch layer anymore. Um, I don't like to delete it though, so I'll keep it in there. And, uh, you know, but I will disable it or turn it off. And then I'm going to turn back on our inks and then we're going to work on this layer. So um, there are a million and one brushes in here that you can switch to. I, I use the same brush that I used to ink to do color and so uh so I, it's not very exciting i guess you know because a lot of people will switch out brushes and do different things i really don't a lot at least not with these barong masks um i am going to take the font uh, the brush size up a little bit just because we're going to have a, a little more space to cover uh and i tend to at least in my first couple passes use really bright colors even if they're not going to be indicative of what we end up sticking with so, um, you know, because you can always kind of change the color, especially in the computer, right? I mean, you can, you can go in and modify different colors and by keeping all of our different blocks of color on different layers, uh, we can modify them one layer at a time. So like right now I'm doing, uh, this kind of pink color and, uh, and I kind of like the idea of maybe pinks and teals for this thing. Um, it's something I was thinking about. Um, I mentioned at the top of the video that I was in Vegas this last week and, hanging out with the guys from this project. And uh, actually one, I, I went to a, like a penthouse party thing with them. Um, and it, it were the, they were the hosts of. And uh, while I was there, I won a pair of uh, basketball shorts from them that were, you know, Pigeons of New York branded uh, basketball shorts. And uh, so, but they were pink and kind of a greeny color. And then their their main logo is kind of got a lot of purples and blues and stuff in it. And so uh, so my thought was maybe I'd kind of live in that color palette a little bit. Um, we will see, but I, you know for now this is what I'm blocking in. So I'm just going to block in these colors. Now you can see at this point, I mean it's really just kind of like you know coloring like a color book, right? I mean we I do this in layers, you know. So we're going to have all these color layers uh, underneath. Uh, so they're all situated beneath the ink layer in the um, layer palette or whatever they call that thing, the little layer drop down. And, um, and then underneath each of those layers, 
I'm going to go in and add uh, different color layers for each different thing, right? So this this will be sort of the block for this chunk. And, uh, and then I'll do another layer for the beak and another layer for the tusks and another layer and so on, right? And uh, so we'll end up with quite a few layers, but we'll try and just reg you know relegate everything to one color at a time. And then uh, once we have each of those layers blocked in there, then I will add layers on top of those layers for highlights and uh, lowlights, basically shadows. And so, uh, so yeah, so that's kind of how we'll accomplish kind of a three-dimensional effect. In fact, I can show you real fast. You know, like this is a, a finished one. Uh, that'll drop like sometime around October, but you can see there's sort of highs and lows and then blocks of color, right? So all, everything that gives this thing texture is sort of on those, you know, upper, you know, shadow and highlight layers. So anyway, let me jump back into this one. But um, so, yeah, so we're uh, basically just trying to build this thing up over time. I don't like to rush. There are a lot of people who will just kind of lay down all their color uh, underneath here. And I will show you too, um, because we're basically treating this thing almost like a color book page right now. Uh, I'll just show you. I mean, the reason it's coming out looking sharp is because those inks are sitting on top, right? So that's just the paints by itself. So if you were to look at the, the paints, you can see that it's uh, not that good looking actually. But when you put it underneath this layer, um, it sort of fills in all the gaps. So it uh, makes up for any little mistakes in, the, in your coloring. So... So I can see, according to uh, to YouTube anyway, we actually have a viewer right now. So that's pretty exciting. So thanks uh, to whoever you are. I wish I could say more hi than just hi, but uh, I, I, you're totally anonymous to me. So <laughs> so anyway, but thanks for uh, for tuning into this stream. This is sort of my first live stream doing this, and uh, uh, I don't know how many more will will be to come, but this is. Uh, first go at it so but i'm working on this art project it's for uh well it's sort of an homage to an nft project called the pigeons of new york and uh so but i'm doing it in a, a style of of design or in a style of mask uh part of a collection that i've done several illustrations for so anyway so i'm i'm doing the their their brand in my style if that makes sense so but yeah, so we'll go, I don't know, another 15 or so minutes, and then we'll we'll call it a wrap uh, for today. But, uh, or well, or at least for now, maybe I'll come back on later, I don't know. But um, yeah, I got to go do some stuff that actually pays bills, you know. So uh, so anyway, so, you know, just as we're going, um, you know, just blocking in this color, I wish I could do it a little bit faster. There is such a thing as a... You know, it, again, this is maybe a quicker and sloppier route, but in Procreate, you could do something like, let me just jump over to my art layer. Um, if I'm on the same layer as my inks, for example, I could just drag this color out here and do color that way. I just don't like to do it because then your ink layer and your color layer are one. And so you lose your flexibility to be able to, uh, to change colors and stuff. For example, I can go in here and go to this tool, this hue and saturation tool, and I can adjust, right? So if I decide my pink is stupid, I can go to blue or red or green or whatever I want. And uh, and so it's kind of nice to have that flexibility where if that color was under that or on the same layer as that ink layer, we would lose the ability to, uh, to be able to do that. So I don't know if you can see it, I've got a little you know spillage here. So I've got to go back in with the eraser and clean up my ink a little bit. Oh, all right. Well, I think that that's probably it for the pink, uh, or at least for color number one, whatever that ends up being. So we're gonna make another layer real quick. Gonna add, I don't know, sort of a beakish type color. I'm gonna go in and put a little color in, under that beak. All right. What's going on with my color? All right. So anyway, so now I'm going to punch in this this color, but you can see like because of the ink layer sitting on top, it's keeping the colors sort of separate. So but again, if I was to turn off the ink layer, just so you can sort of see how this is shaping up underneath it, you can see that it's kind of just, you know, this ugly, you know, whatever mess of colors. Like so really, in this case, it's the inks bringing it together. 
there is a, you know, other kinds of illustration where you don't rely on line art, for example. So this one has a line art uh, border around each block of color. Um, but a lot of times, you know, when you're working with color, uh, you don't necessarily have to have line art between them. You could do it, uh, you know, just by using contrasting colors or something like that. And I can even show you, you know, in some of these other ones or, you know, like this is the original guy here. Um, some of these things, you know, where I went in and used shadows, they are just shadow over top of the color, right? There's not another outline around those things. Um, so you can sort of see how just contrasting color can also make a border. So um, that same little trick I showed you a, a minute ago, I guess, where you can uh, kind of drag and drop your color in. You can, as long as it's relegated to a layer, right? So for example, I'm doing this layer of yellow. If I contain an area, right, so let's make a little circle there. I could drag and drop inside that circle. But if you look really close, you can see it sort of creates a, I don't know, like in Photoshop parlance, it would be a, a pixel difference, you know, but you kind of have to go in and patch that up. If you do that little drag and drop tool, it's not perfect. And so I tend to not use it, um, you know, because you get a little bit of off color. You know, or just or you're going to end up like if you put it on a background, for example, you might not notice that there's white, you know, showing through there. But then when you go to add the background graphic uh, or background color, or whatever you're going to put underneath it, um, you will notice it then. And so and then you've got to find that layer and go back and fix it and stuff like that. So for me, I just I prefer to just kind of do it by hand. You could probably go with a bigger brush here, but I don't like having to change brushes a lot. And so. Um, you know, I, I increased the size from my inking pen for this brush, but I don't want to go big than little than big than little to try and fill in these big blocks of color. So it takes me a little more time, but uh, it's just how I roll. So another cool uh, characteristic or feature of Procreate is the ability to zoom really well. I mean, you can see me zooming in and out all the time. Um, but like, you know, at first glance, like, I mean, if you're out here or something, you might look at that and go, okay, I nailed it, you know. But you can get in here and you can see that I've overlapped a lot of this. And the, the pen I use, it's got little speckles in it. You can see that there's some, you know, I mean, it's just the, the nature of the pen I'm using. Um, but I... Uh, want to still go in and clean up this space here in the in between eventually i'm going to put color over that right there will be a, a color layer for this little decorative element whatever this is this little thing um so there will be color layer there that has that and and perhaps if it was situated above the beak layer you'd never notice those little bits of yellow but i tend to want to just keep the illustration as perfect as i can throughout even if it means take a little more time uh, I find that when you're done with projects or when you, you know, when you're finished with the illustration, uh, if you take the extra time and, and do those kinds of things, pay that extra attention to detail, you end up with better output, um, you know, when you go to do something else with it. So, for example, with some of these other uh, mask illustrations that I've done, you know, now you can get T-shirts and things like that. But like the artwork had to be buttoned up and of good quality to be able to reproduce it very well, you know, at print. And so a big part of that is doing it the right way the first time, right? And uh, if you, for example, have trouble matching your inks, you know, let's say that the color ink you want for your t-shirt is different than your, you can see I'm going to go back and fix this uh, little crack here in this tooth because uh, I don't like that it lines up with that bottom lip. Um, you can see that there's, uh, you know, a, a real benefit to having chosen your um or keeping your colors on different co uh, layers so that you can then go back and uh and make changes to your colors or whatever uh, to get them to come out appropriately at the press so anyway so it's it's better to just have the big file and better to use multiple layers and all that stuff i mean you know to each their own everybody can do whatever they want to do but that's uh that's my preference and you know even as a, a professional in the you know design business or uh, advertising business like you know, great input is key. You know, it's like the old saying, garbage in, garbage out, that kind of thing. So, you know, doing your illustrations at a large scale. Uh, this illustration, for example, is being done at 18 by 24. 
So it's, uh, you know, it's pretty huge, 18 inches by 24 inches for people who aren't on the inch system. Um, so it's pretty good sized and, uh, and it's at 300 DPI or 300 uh, re uh, resolution, which is typically what you need for print. Um, you might be able to cheat and get away with some other things, but typically that's what you're looking for. And so, um, so yeah, so anyway, you do it, you set it up that way in the first place so that when you need the high resolution later, you, you know, it's good. You certainly don't need good resolution like that for Instagram or social media or anything like that. But if you ever think that you may do something with the file down the road, just do it right the first time. You'll save yourself a bunch of headache later. All right. I think I'm going to do one more little color layer and then uh, and then we'll bounce out of here. We've got about 10 minutes left in the hour. And then uh, and it's coming up on 12, 1230 local time. So I probably ought to probably ought to bounce and get onto something else. But um, actually, let's do this. Um, let's go back to a pink. Let's choose, I don't know, more pinky pink, something a little bit different than the, the other pink we used for this little, I don't know what to call it, uh, gobbler deal. I don't know. I know there's a name for it. I've looked it up before, but I don't know what it's called, and especially on a pigeon. I don't know what it's called. So, so anyway, so we're just going to punch in this color. So, and I can show you guys again quickly here, um, you know, what it looks like if I turn off that art layer or the, uh, the ink layer, just so you can sort of see how the, uh, the colors are coming together underneath. Second, so sometimes you can see, like on these little small details here, I just painted over them anyway, just to make sure they got painted, and then I'll go back and uh, I'll erase them. So, I actually, you know, I'm gonna color that in. This sort of like a nostril, I guess, but um, the reason I'm coloring it in now is because I'm going to be able to add darkness to it later through one of my shadow layers. Instead of putting a whole separate color layer just for the nostrils, I can just do, add a little color or add a little uh, darkness to it later when we add shadows. So I'm, uh, I'm foregoing doing a second layer for that color uh, for now, but that'll make more sense at another point when we actually get to that layer. Okay, so those are cleaned up. So uh, it looks like I missed a little spot on this line. So again, I'm using a, like a, I think this pencil, it's actually a stock pencil. I've bought a lot of them, but this one's just in it. It's called dry ink uh, in the inking palette. I happen to really like it. I don't, it's probably not for everybody, but I like the texture. Also the, the presets that it comes with are, uh, I don't know, really comfortable for me to draw with. Um, sometimes you'll find, you know, especially with digital art or when you're drawing on Procreate or, or a platform similar, um, you know, these pencils, the, like uh, digital pencils are really sensitive. Uh, I think they have something like, uh, you know, 2,500 layers of, of depth or pressure sensitivity. And so sometimes if they're not configured right, you spend the whole time pressing down. Or like in my case, I happen to have what they call kind of a heavy hand. So when I draw, I draw with a heavy hand. And so, um, so you can actually really tire out your wrists and your fingers and stuff like that. Like sometimes you'll see me stop and kind of do some of this because I've got like tingly fingers from, uh, from going too hard. So, uh, so sometimes you have to, to back off, but the, the way that dry ink brush works, um, feels a little better for me. So, um, you know, you'll have to experiment a little bit. And of course in procreate too, everything's adjustable. So you can go in here and go to this dry ink pen, for example, here's the sample. And then you can go over here and you have all these characteristics you can trade out and, and adjust to get it just how you like it. Um, for me, honestly, I just use the stock one and it works. Okay. Um, I'm going to change my pink a little bit to be a little bit more purple. So again, this is the benefit of having things on different layers. So I'm going to find a little bit more purple color. I'm going to pump it up in brightness a little bit and go a little more fluorescent. So I don't know if the color will stay that way, but I just wanted a little more contrast between my pink here and that pink. So anyway, so there's that again here. If we drop the ink layer, you can sort of see what we've got going on underneath there. And you can see there's, I mean, there's flaws in that layer, right? I mean, in fact, I might fix a couple of them and just that I can fill in some of these gaps that are missing color, but, um, but it just doesn't matter when it's all underneath the ink layer. So it just doesn't, you know, it's not important to, to fix all those things. So anyway, well, I think guys, I think that that is where I'm going to stop.
for the moment. It's about five minutes to a, a full hour. I really only intended to do about 15 minutes, but once I get rolling, I'm having a good time. Um, grateful for the uh, the people who tuned in over the course of the hour, and uh, we'll probably do some more of these things. I'm not sure if they'll live here on the Eggs channel or if they'll live over on my personal channel. Uh, you can look me up on YouTube at, um, it's just uh, Ryan Rogar. In fact, on all the socials, everything, it's just Ryan Rogar. It's R-Y-A-N-R-O-G-H-A-A-R. Um, I should probably use a cooler pseudonym or something like that. But uh, for now, everything's under my name. And uh, so you can find me on Instagram, uh, TikTok, uh, Twitter, you know, all the, all the usual suspects, same username everywhere. So, and uh, yeah, I guess that's it. So I guess um, for now, since we didn't have a way to really interact with one another through a live chat at this point, let's um, put any questions or concerns or comments or, or whatever in the uh, comments down below. Um, I guess, I mean, this is a live broadcast, so, but I, I suspect it gets put on YouTube like a, a normal video. So I guess it'll have a, a comment section. So if it does, go ahead and uh, leave your comments, leave your thoughts. If there's anything in particular you want me to cover in a future video, let me know. And then as we go, I'll either do more videos here or maybe I'll do them over on my other channel, but drop them here on the eggs channel so that, you know, people who are eggs listeners can, can track it down. Um, whatever. I don't know. It's pretty, it's pretty in flux, but feel free to engage with me on social media. If there's something you like, didn't like, want to see more of less of. Um, and, uh, and I guess that'll be that. So thanks again for everybody tuned in and, uh, I guess we'll see you guys next time.